Hey everybody. Thought I'd take a, a moment. Uh, the, the the local lake, which is managed by the uh, Fish and Wildlife Department, stocks rainbow trout uh, in our lake every year, and uh, they're they're fun to catch. I'm really looking forward to it. Supposedly they stocked them yesterday. Uh, I found out this morning. I was I was trying to catch some bass, and a, a fella told me that they stocked them yesterday, and. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Put some trout in the freezer. They're tasty. They're fun to catch. Especially fun to catch if you use the right tackle. Light tackle. But uh, <clears throat> I, I had an idea. I'm just going to show you the way I like to catch them. And my favorite bait to use. You can catch trout on minnows, little spinners, road runners, uh, little bucktail jigs, corn use corn. Lots of people like to use corn. But uh, one of my favorites is this Berkeley Power Bait. It's uh, the corn. I think it's it's one of the best trout baits ever. You pick it up at Wally World or uh, wherever you uh, get bait. Less than four bucks. I think it's usually around 350 You buy one of these, it'll last you. See, this is actually one left over from last season. You know, what I'll actually do is I will probably go and buy a fresh one because I'm kind of superstitious that way. I want to make sure I have the best chances of catching fish and having fun. As you can see, it's just a, it's like Play-Doh. You just scoop a little bit out with your finger and you roll it into a ball. And then you just roll it up. And uh, <clears throat> I, as far as, as far as like touching this bait, getting your scent all over it I've never since I've been using it I've never I've always caught my limited trout I've never uh, this is a little old so it's not sticking together like it should we will just mash it up a little bit there but uh, and my hands are dirty I work with my hands I just had, I had an idea to do this video a spur of the moment type thing but uh, usually without the without the dirt it's uh, it's obviously that color but you're just gonna roll it up into a little ball about a marble size about a marble and when you put it on the hook the cool thing about this bait is it floats and the advantage to that one it's fluorescent green or yellow however whatever you want to say it's corn colored fluorescent corn will go with that but it floats so as opposed to other people you know throwing corn out there the corn's going down it's sinking to the bottom of the thing it might get wedged in between rocks or twigs or some vegetation they don't see it but with this it floats up it's a suspending bait you're going to fish it on the bottom you're going to use a sinker you can use a slip sinker rig you throw it out sinker's going to go down it's going to be floating up you're going to reel it tight and you're going to do about maybe like a like a six to eight inch leader and what it does it gets it off the bottom it makes it you know m m more readily visible to the fish that you're trying to catch so we're, we're going to do that i'm going to show you the rig that i use it's really simple we'll just uh we'll put it there you'll see Bloop. it floats so you can see we're going to use a really light hook um, for two reasons. One, I want to make sure that my bait floats. And uh, two, these trout, the first couple of weeks that they've been stocked, they'll eat anything. I mean, they'll just attack it. But then they start getting kind of wise. And you really need to downsize your hooks. I'm just going to pitch this and throw this away. Well, I just wipe it on my pants. Anyways, all right, so. What I like to do, I like to use a panfish hook. I got these uh, Eagle Claw Laser Sharps. They're uh, rotating panfish hooks in a size six. Size six. These are stupid sharp. I mean, I know I didn't hold it close to the camera like you can see the sharpness, but <clears throat> they are sharp and they work well. They will poke anything. But one thing that I really like to do is take a pair of pliers and I want to pinch down this barb because 
every trout that I catch, I don't necessarily keep it. If it's small, I want it to go back. And these barbs, I mean, this, this hook really penetrates. And I want to be able to get, if I don't want to keep this fish, I want to be able to return that fish back into the water in good condition. So I want to pinch that barb down. Make sure I don't hit the, hit the tip or anything like that. I'm pinching it down. I've adjusted the hook and it is not going to hamper, you know, how effective I can, that hook can penetrate a fish. Uh, the only thing I would say is, is, you know, you bent the barb down, you definitely, after you hook the fish, you want to keep some pressure on it. You want to keep the hook in him. It will be easier for it to wiggle out of the fish's mouth, but generally it's not a problem. Just keep, keep the pressure on the fish. All right. I'll be using uh, some four pound test Berkeley trilene. It's clear. Um, I like to use light spinning tag. I have a seven foot uh, ultralight rod paired with a uh, Shimano Sienna 500 uh, spinning reel. So it's real good. I like it. I just put that combo together, took it out this morning. It's great to catch, catch a little bass on and, and whatnot. Uh, it makes a little fish seem a lot bigger and that's what makes it funner. So we're just gonna peel off a little bit here. We're gonna go ahead and we're, just, we're gonna tie it on here with a clinch knot. You can use whatever knot that you wanna use. I like clinch knots, it's committed to memory. So I use it. We're just gonna thread it through the eye. And go one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to go back through this loop that we created down here. Shove that through and then when we just made another loop we're going to stick it right back through there. With my big thumb in the way. We're going to grab it and whenever you tie a hook, whenever before you cinch it down, I know it's gross but you have to spit on it you have to lubricate that line somewhere because when you pull it down it creates friction friction creates heat heat creates a weakness at the knot and uh, you don't want to lose a fish just because you didn't spit on your line so I'm just going to go ahead and do that off camera over here and I'm going to go ahead and pull it on down so we got it it's on down a pair of scissors normally I just bite that off but you know leave leave a quarter leave a quarter you don't have to clip so close I like to be safe leave a, a quarter quarter of the line there now I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna be I'm not sure I'm just eyeballing that's probably about about eight inches I'm gonna give myself a little bit more because I'm gonna tie another knot so we're just gonna go ahead and cut this right there and we're gonna make our leader now you could just tie that directly on the end of your line but I like to use a swivel uh, you can also kind of make your, yourself a leader out of a split shot you just you know tie tie the hook onto your line put a split shot six inches up and that's fine I don't like split shots uh, for the reason all the stores sell those removable ones the one that the, you know the little, little pac-man and it looks like it's got like a little uh, uh, a thingy so you can reuse them I hate it. those get snagged on the bottom so much a while back I got my hands on some uh, snagless split shots and they were great but now Walmart doesn't sell them anymore and Dick's doesn't sell them anymore and I can never remember to hop online and find somebody uh, to get them from them there so now we're just gonna do the same thing we're gonna tie another another clinch knot right so that's that swivel. Go ahead and do that. Same thing. See, I give myself a little bit extra line. By the time I'm done tying this knot, oh, I'm probably going to have about the right distance that I need. I'll go ahead and tie it. One, two, three, four and five. I think I did six on the other one. They're trout. The biggest they're going to pull out of there is, is maybe a pound. So 
I can I can get a little lazy there. Spit. Sometimes it doesn't take take your fingernail, pull it down. Make sure you got it. Take your tag in there. Don't get them confused. You have to do it again. Go ahead and clip that off. Now I'll use just your regular slip sinker egg weights. You know, Wally World, wherever. But uh, you know, now we're gonna pretend this is this is the line that's that's on our pole. We're gonna connect it. So if we would just slide it through our slip sinker, and we're gonna tie it directly onto our swivel. Do it again. I know. I know. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. It pays off. It, it does. It does kind of suck. I might be tempted to uh, go back to a split shop if I had a, a, you know, if I was just breaking off left and right. It would kill me to sit there on the on the bank and just keep tying these all days all day after after I broke off. It, it would be horrible. I'd be frustrated. It'd be easier just to tie a tie one hook and slap on a split shot. I get it. Little spit. We're gonna clip. There we go. So we're gonna throw it out. Got our slip sinker. Slip sinker is gonna stop right there, which gives us uh, probably about an eight inch leader. Eight, nine inch. That's not too bad. Uh, if I did this again, I probably would make it a little bit, a little shorter. You gotta think, you know, we're gonna suspend off the bottom, you know, that much. It's not horrible. So now, once again, we just grab our Play-Doh. And, and when this stuff is new, it's actually, whereas this stuff, it's kind of old and cakey. It doesn't want to roll together very good. Like I said, this is from last. This is from last winter. It's been in my taco box. It's gotten hot. It's gotten cold, hot, and cold again. But uh, about a marble. You can go bigger. You can go bigger if you want to. Go bigger. Just roll it. Stick it together. Make it a, a pleasing sphere, if you will. And we're just going to Barry, I should have done this with a with a newer thing. I could have waited one day, but I had this on my mind. I just thought I'd do it now. And we're just going to go ahead and bury that hook in it. And we're going to pack it around that hook. We're not going to leave the barb exposed or anything. We're just going to pack it in there just like that. Um, when it's fresh, it is surprisingly hard to uh, throw it off the hook. On the cast, I've never had any casting issues. It's really good. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna throw it out, reel it down. It's gonna suspend up. As you're gonna see, it's uh, we're gonna chuck it in this here uh, thing of water, and it's still gonna float with the hook in it. So that hook isn't enough to weigh it down. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I can't wait. I'll get some footage when I go, and uh, we'll probably do a video on on how to cook. How to clean and, and uh, cook the uh, the trout, but uh, there you go, folks. That's my trout rig. Works on most lakes. Go get you some Berkeley corn flavored fluorescent power bait. It's super. All right, man. Tight lines. I'll catch you later.